Hello, and welcome to our wonderful presentation. I'm Marikita Solis with We Did It Health, and I'm excited to, to welcome Jean Schumacher, and she's going to be giving us pro tips for plant-based holiday thriving, and we can all use that during the holiday season. It's, it's pretty much on us, <laughs> and so we've got to be ready, and at We Did It Health, we really want to help people communicate with peacefulness and effectiveness. And so that's another good reason that we've got Jean here because she is an advocate for holistic well-being, and that is about peacefulness in your being. She has a doctorate in science and education and over 35 years of teaching experience. So I'm very happy to welcome you, Jean, to our show. Well, thank you so much for having me. Yes, and everyone that's watching, Please um, let, give us, if you're watching on the replay or live, let us know your questions and we're here to help navigate the holiday season. So, and let us know where you're joining from. All right. So um, we're very honored that Jean has a, some, a little presentation for us and she's going to be answering questions. So, and can you tell us a little bit, Jean, where are you tonight? I, um, I'm on Cape Cod and just had an absolutely lovely day traipsing around uh, in the forest. It, what's cool about Cape Cod is there's so many different microbiomes within a very small area. So I was out today enjoying this amazing day. So. That's beautiful. I love it because that just reminds me, I just went forest bathing this past weekend. And I think about, I mean, the connection with the trees that some, sometimes we're not aware of how our bodies are healing when we're just simply being in their presence and breathing the gifts of that they give us. So it's true. It's true. Yeah, it so is. Do I need to share my screen? Are you ready? Let's, yes. uh, let's see. Let me get, okay. I'm going to let you take over Jean. All right. So I want to just show and start with, you know, I think of it as a road, you know, cause you're navigating kind of, you know, in and out, of this presentation, I mean, of this, this whole holiday. So it is kind of a big thing. It's a big deal. But the first thing you want to do is to really talk to your host. That's one of the first things because you need to share what your wants and needs are, you know, so you just got to, you know, contact. And I think of it like there's three different levels of people that you're going to be joining holidays with, you know, your family. And typically up to this point, I had been doing family, you know, holidays and things like that. We might have some friends come across, but it was typically family that I was sharing that with. And then this year I'm doing it with friends. So this is going to be a new, new, I'm navigating some new things here. And then acquaintances like your you're just moved to a, to a new town and you don't have any family and friends and your boss invites you over. So you're going to be encountering people you don't really don't know, you know, all that well, but you need to let them know if there's, you know, first of all, any allergies that you might have um, and let them know about that. Like if you have any gluten issues or if you've got peanut sensitivity, you know, whatever your issue is, because you don't want to be ending up in the emergency room with an EpiPen, you know, if you don't have your EpiPen with you or whatever. So there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, one of the things you should do is for sure, make sure that your, your host knows that you're plant-based and vegan and because they may not understand and what, what does that mean? You know? So I've had, you know, people mix up vegetarian and vegan and they're not really sure. Can you have cheese? Can you have milk? You know, what, what, what can you have? What can't you have? They're not sure. So you might have to explain that. So, that's a helpful thing. And one of the other things that you can do is to help plant what I call plantizing a recipe, because honestly, he, it's basic food. It's food. It's just food. And so, you know, mashed potatoes and gravy can be mashed potatoes and gravy, and it could be plant-based very easily. So that's a really great, great, wonderful dish. I mean, that's easy to, to make plantized, to you know, you can use vegetable broth instead of chicken broth and the stuffing and gravy, you know, and people sometimes don't understand, you know, that especially for me, I've been plant-based for a long time. <clears throat> so if I were to use like chicken broth in a recipe or, you know, eat that, that it could really throw off my gut biome and it's not going to have very pretty consequences, you know, in terms of your digestion. So, you know, they just don't understand that your gut biome changes when you, you know, switch to a different diet. So, 
um, you know, and plant-based milks, you know, you can use that in mashed potatoes to give it that creaminess in, you know, instead of dairy milk or stuffing. Oh my God. There's so many different recipes for stuffing that are, that are plant-based and delicious. Oh my gosh. And we have come a long way in terms of like plant milks, you know, condiments, sauces, recipes. I mean, just look at all the different milks. I mean, there's soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, cashew milk. I mean, you know, on and on and on. So you, you can find one that works for you. But it's it's pretty cool that you can navigate, you know, this way uh, a lot easier than than it was. So, uh, and there's so many recipes you can offer to bring something to the, you know, Thanksgiving dinner. You know, you can offer to bring, you know, a few dishes. And there's so many recipes and it's easy to plantize and make a healthy version of it, pretty much anything. So, you know, I'm, I'm really excited that the recipes are just really, really have expanded on so many levels in the comfort food. And Thanksgiving is probably one of my ultimate favorite, favorite holidays for sure. So, I mean, there's a lot to choose from and, you know, so that's the first thing is to really connect with your host and then, you know, think about what it is that you want to bring, you know, again, it goes back to connecting with your host, you know, perhaps like your host might be willing to put aside some of the dish, like if they're making, you know, mashed potatoes before they <laughs> make it so that it's non-vegan. Can you like just put some aside for me and I'll bring up my own sauce? done. That's an easy fix, you know, or show up early and help in the cooking of this. You know, I'm sure extra hands would always be, you know, greatly appreciated. And it is an opportunity to show <laughs> I'm not deprived. I don't know about you, but I am not deprived on any level. <laughs> I mean, in terms of food, because people are like, so what do you eat? Like grass clippings, you know, uh, bar tree bar. No, I save that for a special occasion. But Thanksgiving is just one of the easiest holidays that you can really, really plantize very, very easily. So um, one of the things that I did with my family, I was the only person in my family who went plant-based. So, you know, kind of one of the things that I did is I would always bring an appetizer and I really liked these Edward and Sons, their brown rice, you know, crackers. They have two types that are unsalted. Then I like the sesame because it's just got a little bit more flavor to it. And then I'll buy a plant-based cheese. Now I, that's a treat for me because I normally don't, or you can make your own um, and make a healthy version of them or a healthier version, I should say. So, you know, I get something that I normally wouldn't get. And then that I know I have something that I can eat. So as long as I have something to eat, I don't feel deprived. So I think that's one of the biggest things is not feeling deprived. Then I always worked out, I would bring a huge salad because everybody likes salad. And I just put my dressing on the side. And then there's a whole host of dressings people can pick from and choose so that everybody gets their favorite. And then what I do is use these. These are called mini hot logics. And these are the red one in particular is it fits two of those glass dishes. Those are Pyrex. And I think they're like six, I think six cup that fit into that. And there are two of those can fit side by side in the red one. One fits in the smaller one. Um, and I take that, I use that to take to work, but the red one up on top, you can fit two of those. And I have two of those red ones that they're like, you know, nine by 13, you know, carry ons that you can put a big dish in there too. But I'll make like four dishes. And as soon as I get to wherever I'm going, then I would pick a corner someplace where nobody's going to be bothering it, any small children, whatever, dogs. I would plug them in and just leave them alone and not try and get into the way of everybody, you know, trying to prepare the turkey and the stuffing and then this and then that. I already got my food. So I know that it's going to be okay for me. I don't have to ask. I don't have to question. I don't have to bother, you know, trying to plant ties, whatever. So I spend the day in the kitchen the day before and I bring it and just have it heated up. Then I have dessert. I make the chocolate peanut butter pie, which is in the bottom left-hand corner. That is without question one of the, the best uh, recipes. And all of my family recognize what that is and go, yeah, you can bring that. That's that's pretty good. We'll, we'll take that. So 
And people ask me all the time, so what kind of recommendations do you have? So you can go to my website, plantbasedacademy.net and click under red recommendations. And I've got all kinds of things that from pots and pans to what kind of vitamins do I recommend? And I put little notes and stuff like that all in this. And, you know, because when you find something that works, you want to shout it from the rooftops. So what I did is I put this into a huge Google document that you can click through. There's an outline on the side that shows you, you know, you can click through from food to teas to supplements to vitamins, whatever. So, you know, if there's something that you're looking for in particular, I can research it and find the best choice for you. So um, that's just one of the ideas, you know, that I do is that I make my own food and, and bring that. So it works out really, really well. Okay. Well, drinks. Drinks is another problem because first of all, if you're vegan, you know, and going the vegan route, not all beer and wine is vegan. I just want to, I don't want to burst your bubble. It's just better if you bring your own drinks, you know, whatever you're going to drink, you know, bring, I typically just drink tea. I drink herbal tea and I'll make my own specialty drinks as well. And I just bring those and, you know, whatever I'm going to be drinking that night, I just bring it myself because then I don't have to ask or beg or hope that there's going to be something there that I can drink, you know, and you might want to do something like bring some eggnog, you know, that can be made easily plant-based or like, for example, there's an almond sugar cookie hot toddy. That's delicious. I mean, there's just so many things that you can make that are delicious and work, you know? So, you know, if you're adventurous, bring some drinks and try them out on, on people, but at least for yourself so that you know exactly, you know what you're, what you're consuming. All right. <laughs> and I hate to point this out because it's just dinner. <laughs> we don't have to like flip out or anything about this whole thing. It's just dinner. And we have to not forget, you know, you were invited to this Thanksgiving dinner, whatever, whoever you're with, because people want your company you know, family, friends, acquaintances, whatever. They want to be around with you. They, you've got an invitation. So dinner is not the place to get up on your pulpit, to become preachy, to lecture on environmental impact, to talk about the horrors of factory farming and point out the dead carcass that's sitting on the middle of the table. We don't need to do that. We don't want to make, you know, our host and the other guests uncomfortable. Because it is uncomfortable and it's and it's painful to talk about and you know there's just a lot going on there. You just don't want to do that, you know. And if anybody wants to say you know or ask questions, if they're legitimately interested, just just say, "Can we schedule another time?" You know, to talk. I'd love to talk with you. I could spend hours talking with you about this whole thing. Happy to talk to you, but let's not. Can we not do it today? Because today's just family. Today's Thanksgiving. Today is just being grateful you know, and, and having an attitude of gratitude. So that's what I look forward to, you know, in that is just to make sure that this is not the place to do this. You do not want to open up that can of worms. So what, um, you know, there's always that person <laughs> that is going to have an impact on your evening. You know, the, the, the jokester, they, they've just got to come out with the cutting, you know, nasty remarks, you know, don't take the bait. You, you don't want to, to, to jump in on this. Okay. So, I mean, when you think about this, whether you're choosing to eat, you know, not eat animal products for animals, the environment, for our health, whatever it is, we are setting an example. We're taking direct action to change, to make change. We're taking this path. And that casts a light on the people who are not. So sometimes there's that, that, you know, who do you think you are? Goody two shoes, whatever. The best way is first of all, don't take the bait. Don't get, you know, offended by the jokes, whatever. Where's your tofurkey? You know, oh, please. Like, uh, like, I haven't heard that one before. Okay. You just smile, nod your head politely. And you move off to somebody else in the other room and talk to them. You know, you don't have to sit there hanging out with Uncle David and he, he, listening to him talk about, no, move to another, excuse me, I need to go get a drink, you know, and just exit stage left. Understand that this is their 
issue, not yours at all. All right. Just smile, move on and continue on your way to somebody else who's a little bit more easier to talk to. So um, let's see. And just let's not lose the whole point of this, you know, especially for Thanksgiving is to give thanks for all your blessings and to be able to spend time with the people you care about and the rest is plant-based gravy. I couldn't help it. That there is that pun intended. I just couldn't help that anyway. And I think in modeling this, modeling this lifestyle, modeling your commitment, you know, people are going to become curious about it. Why are you, why are you doing that? And once they learn about the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle, then they're going to show, I, I think, respect for my beliefs. And then they taste my food. And then they're like, kind of that recipe, that was really good. You know, especially, oh my God, those like chocolate fudge popsicles that are down there. Those are really delicious. But the food is, I've eaten more abundance of so many other things. It's crazy that, you know, I, on no level am I deprived at all. So yeah, no, it's, 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 it's amazing that, you know, that we can do this and, you know, let's not forget about what this is about spending time with people you care about. It's just one day people. It's just one day, you know, let's not forget that. All right. So that's, that's it there. All right. Wow. I love the I love some of the points that you made, Jean. I mean, I love the whole presentation, but I really liked that. Uh, well, that that you can take yourself away from, you know, to know that it's coming and not to take the bait and separate. Right. And to set up don't have the conversation at the table. I mean, that can just turn into a disaster, right? Because if you're the only vegan or whole food plant-based, you know, you might, you'll be the only one and then everyone is going to be, you know, <laughs> so, so, you know, if somebody, which they might be very curious, sure. I'd love to talk to you about this. Let's talk about it on a later date right now. I want to focus on this, which I think is really, really powerful. Right. And yeah, yeah, because being the only one, can be hard. And there's yeah. a lot of people that don't want to be with their families. Oh, it's true. It's true. I mean, for a long time, I would get the questions like, what's in that? What'd you make it out of? It's food. Get over it. You know, the people that are bringing, and I, and I swear it was a, a, a you know, competition to see who could bring the highest calorically dense food possible on this planet Plus the food that would harm you the most, like taking salami and wrapping it around cream cheese and bacon. I mean, like, oh, my God, could you get any more worse for your arteries than that? I mean, and and thinking this is wonderful. And, and nobody ever questions that person who brings that dish. Like, did you know that that's a type three carcinogen right there that you're you just brought into the house? I mean, like, uh, <laughs> Right, right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, just, <laughs> wow, have you checked the news lately about that bacon or that salami? I mean, just anyway. So it 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 is it is it's tough. It's tough to navigate. So I don't do it anymore. I mean, I used to at one point, you know, gung ho. Oh my god, let me tell you what I found out, what I've learned, and how I reverse, you know, and I've and I've lost all this weight. And for for people that don't know my story, I started with a trip to the emergency room. And I had over 105 degree fever and I would break out in, I, I was sweating so profusely that I was losing so much liquid and so much fluid. And then I would start these racking chills that they had to put like a mouth guard because otherwise they were afraid I was going to, I couldn't stop chattering my teeth. And so it just really became tough. Uh, you know, I was a week like that in the hospital and the woman who came to see me was not only a medical doctor, but she was a nutritionist and that was it. She, when I got out of the hospital, they never figured out what it was. And I really don't care because it was my body going, hello, what you're doing is not working. And so I went to see her as a nutritionist and she started me on a book, prevent reverse heart disease. And then that was it. You know, I read that one night and I'm like, okay, next question. <laughs> so, you know, How I had, you then? Uh, that was about 15 years ago. So, I mean, I feel better now 
You mean I've lost over 100 pounds without dieting. That's the part. And I've gotten off like four blood pressure medications. I have healed my thyroid, which I was told was impossible, reverse fatty liver syndrome. I've stopped migraines. Um, I hardly ever get sick. And if I do get sick, it's like for a very short period of time. My husband's reversed multiple sclerosis. I mean, it's just, it's such a powerful, you know, what you have at the end of your fork is, is so powerful. Wow. That is an amazing story. Yeah. And so what did you used to think about? Did you know about vegans? Did you know about whole food, plant-based or anything like that before you had this issue? No, I did not. I mean, I thought I ate healthy. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know how I, how, how I came up with that thought, but no. And it takes a while for you to hit that brick wall before you go, hmm, that's not working. So so it, it took that time and I'm glad I did. And it's one of the reasons why I do what I do. I mean, I started, you know, simply plant-based. I lecture all over the place. I help people on different levels. I started the plant-based Academy, you know, because you're going to have questions. You're changing everything that you thought was right and healthy that how you were raised. And it's like, and now for something new, you know, right. How to yeah. Cook, yeah. You know, how to, how to, how to cook, how to do this. So that's why I, I just try and share like what I've learned along the way. Cause there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. You're right. There is a lot to learn. It can be very overwhelming for people. So, I mean, we have to be very, we have to understand that, not just say it's so simple. <laughs> I guess, I mean, it's, maybe it's simple to us now, but we have right. to remember we're not everyone's right. like us. Um, so what about your husband? Was he, was he eager to change or how did that happen? He didn't have a choice. I cooked. He ate. Okay. I cooked. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> you know, if you want it, you, you can go out, but there's not, it's not coming into the house. We're done here. You know, uh, no, he, he was always very supportive of, of me and wanting to change because, you know, I, I've lost a hundred pounds. That's like 10 carrying around 10 extra bowling balls. <laughs> on your body at all times. Like seriously, 10, 10 pound balls. Think about that. Carrying that around with you. I don't know about you. If you've ever played, gone bowling, you know, you're just slinging around one ball, like it's 10 pounds and you, you know, you throw your back out. Oh, my hip, that hurt. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> but here you're, I was carrying around 10 of those all the time. And wow. you don't realize the stress that it puts on your frame, you know, and how much how, you don't feel good. You just don't feel good. I mean, so now I feel good today. I was out walking in the, in the, the woods, forest bathing. And we ended up, we went through a huge, beautiful pine forest up here. And then we went into a deciduous forest. Then we got into a whole nother area. We went over to the beach on the bay side of the Cape. So um, if anybody wants to come plant-based Cape Cod, come visit us. We love, I love being out in the woods and, and connecting. There's, it's so beautiful up here. It really is. It's a magnificent place. So. That's amazing. Yeah. I know that JJ is up in, in Maryland and she's got some um, comments here saying we prepared our Thanksgiving meal last year and it took it to the family and people tried a few things. It was great to show people the excellent taste of plant-based food that tastes traditional too. Yes, you're right. Really? We've come such a long way. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And I did things. Um, I did a show with Kim Campbell, who is the daughter-in-law of T. Colin Campbell, and she's got some amazing cookbooks. You know, Kim Campbell, she's got Plant Pure Nation cookbooks, Plant Pure Kitchen cookbook, and Plant Pure Comfort Food. And that is, I, she, all of them are great cookbooks. But what I like about them is they're, they're simple, easy recipes, you know, that... It's, it's stuff you would have normally in your kitchen. It's not that one weird recipe, you know, one weird ingredient that you'll use once in this recipe and never use again. You're like, what was that? I have no idea. And so she uses very common things. And I like that a lot. But uh, we had we did a show for a while. And it's like two of your best friends just sitting in the kitchen chatting. And she might do a cooking demo or something like that. And she's just brilliant. We challenged each other to plant types recipes. And she took a recipe for my family. It's called date nut bread. And it has been in my family for a long time, for, for like quite a few generations, but there's a lot of stuff in there that's not healthy. 
So she plantized it and it's delicious. And I can't tell the difference. I mean, I really, she nailed the recipe. She really kept the original recipe intact and the flavor. So you can do it. I mean, there's ways to, to learn. We've learned a lot, you know, over the time. So, and the recipe made it into her, her most recent cookbook, the plant pure comfort food. So I always got to have my a shout out to my, my Kim. So, yeah, definitely yeah. give us the secrets. Tell us who we should be, you know, buying and looking up. Definitely. Well, we need I, to I, know. I, I'd love her, her recipes, you know, um, they're, they're just phenomenal. They're just really, really, really good. And I like this comment. It says, go ahead. Does she have a YouTube channel? Uh, I think it's plant peer communities or in plant, okay. plant peer chef. I'm pretty, she's on Facebook, plant peer chef and they, and it's plant pure. Um, is the Facebook group, which is a, a phenomenal resource. But I'd love this comment that it says, you know, somebody said, uh, everything tastes really great plant-based too. People don't realize, <laughs> and I love it. I love that <laughs> comment because it's powerful. People don't realize, you know, and especially once you cleanse your palate, my God, you know, I, I, especially like after you do something like a fast or whatever, and you're like, oh my God, do grapes always taste this amazing? Like, wow, this is so good. Or strawberries, raspberries. Oh, those are my crack. That's my crack now. Yeah. And JJ, the one that is the one that just commented, she, she, it does a lot of fruit. So she was eating fruit the other day. I know she wasn't feeling that well. So she was using grapes to heal, right? All the fruit. I mean, fruit is so good for our bodies. So yeah, yeah. It's, Lots of you know, it's exciting. Yes, you're right. And, and thinking about um, how we, the, I know I was just, so I just finished the eCornell class, the plant-based mm -hmm. nutrition and, uh, and remembering how Dr. Um, Doug Lyle was talking or Doug Lyle was talking about how, I mean, we we're losing our taste, you know, because we've got these high, these high fat, sugary foods and you know we're, we're drawn to that and then we eat the apple and it's like well that's not you know because we're yeah. we're drawn to the high calorie and the apple is not going to give us enough calories but those are those are artificial i mean this is such an artificial food system that we're living in you know and people don't question it and that's so funny like you said they say what's in our food well my gosh what is in the food th this food that isn't even real food that has no nutrients that yeah. they that that is labeled food it, it's incredible i call it food like substances mm, that's a good one food like yeah. substances right but if you think about five thousand years ago what would have been in the environment that would have been high in fat pop quiz avocado that's if you were in the right area right and how many times a year would an avocado become ripe well, it wouldn't be year round. So not like here, right. like we have today. Right, right. So you're not going to get them year round. You're going to get them once, maybe twice a year. I don't know how often they come into season. Okay, what else? Potatoes? Not Is that really. high calorie? That's not, I That's can't think true. of anything that high calorie. No, I'm looking at looking for high fat. High fat, okay. It's hard to think of things that are high fat that are healthy. Right. Well, I mean, what would you have found in that environment 5,000 years ago? Nuts? Oh, See? yeah, nuts. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, oh, knew yeah, but... where, I knew where every nut tree was in my neighborhood. I knew where that, what, that tree was. And we would go out with bags in the fall and collect all these nuts. And then I'd sit in my driveway cracking these nuts with a rock. And then I'd sit there with the, you know, the nut pick. And at the end of three hours, you had a little pile of nuts this big, right? That's the um, difference. Right. You're right. Yeah. And so we're gra grabbing the bag of nuts already and then just shoving them in. Oh, and I could do that so easily. <laughs> Honestly, so I, I have no problems <laughs> with that. But it's not just that. I mean, in terms of the nuts and, and whatnot, but a lot of things that we're eating are very high in fat, sugar, and salt. There's a book by Dr. Uh, or not Dr. Um, Michael Moss, who is a Pulitzer Prize research journalist. He wrote the book, Fat, Sugar, Salt. And I have it right over powerful. there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's powerful. It's a really good book. And he's not a food person. He's he's a journalist. And he went and did an expose. And I compare it very much to like the tobacco industry. You know, they took a they took leaves out of their playbooks. I mean, for sure. 
And, you know, the first thing for tobacco was because it was so harsh on our lungs. They're like, okay, well, let's coat it with sugar, you know, to make it softer so that we can, you know, smoke it and hold it into our lungs. Okay. Well, they covered it with sugar. And then the next step is they started adding more nicotine to the food to make it more addictive. So we're kind of doing the same thing. We're upping the amount of fat, sugar, salt in the foods, that holy trio that you eat something and go, it just bangs the fat, sugar, salt. And you're like, oh my God. This is amazing, you know, so anyway, I digress. No, you're right, though. But I mean, I love talking about that. I love those books, um, <clears throat> those books that talk about the, the. Hey, there's another one over there. I can't think of the name. Um, well, the end of overeating talks about that. I mean, how we're mm. so addicted to these foods. I mean, well, because they're they're made to be addictive and, and we're, we're not even aware of it. Right. 100%. 100%. We are not aware of it. And it's sad. It really is. So, but you can do a Thanksgiving. You just got to navigate it. Part of it is communication and letting people know where you're coming from and then offering to prepare or help, you know, and, and just finding some dishes that you really like. Cause you know, <laughs> it, it is, it, there's the question in my house is, is this a make again? You know, that's always on the table because there'll be some recipes I make. And my husband's like, my God, the dog didn't even eat that one. Wow. But that recipe that we will never make again is just as important as the ones you are. So that it helps you to understand what your flavor profiles you don't like, you know, and that you prefer other things, whatever your taste buds, you know, that you respond to. So, you know, it's, it's pretty powerful. To know, and if you think about it, back in the day, we only had ten or twelve recipes. It was, you know, meatloaf Monday, Taco Tuesday. You know, you had those recipes that you cycle through. Now, instead of meatloaf Monday, it's Mexican lasagna. And my husband, like, we do batch cooking. You know, I say, cook once, eat many times, and that's what we do. And we'll be in the kitchen for several hours, my husband and I, and we'll be just making food and putting it into glass dishes and and having it set and ready to roll because failure to plan is a plan for failure. And so it's the same thing. It's just, you're planning this meal that you're going to, you don't know what you're going into in some cases, you know, like if it's just acquaintances, you don't know what you're walking into. If it's family and friends, you kind of know, you know, what's going on how you can plan and negotiate that, but you've got to contact your host. And that's step one without question. And then from there, knowing who your hosts are, how you're going to bring food, it's, it's about the food. And that's what I did for the longest time. And this year is a new one for me because my family is moving in different directions. So we're not doing family, you know, gatherings really anymore, which is, it's a new chapter in my life. So we're getting together with friends who are, happen to be plant-based, you know, we're like, what are you doing for dinner? What are we doing for Thanksgiving? What are you doing for Thanksgiving? And we're all here. We're stuck out on a big sandbar out in the Atlantic Ocean called Cape Cod. So a lot of us have moved here. And so we connect together. Plus, we have a group, you know, a, a meetup group, you know, uh, plant-based Cape Cod. If you ever want to come, we usually have, we try and have, you know, potlucks and gatherings. We do movies, you know, we do restaurant nights out and stuff like that. So it's fun. It's fun. So, you know, we got a gr group of people that don't have any place to go. And that's a fun thing to do too. Yeah, that sounds like fun. If I if I was going to be in that area, I definitely would join you. <laughs> so, what did your family think, Jean, when you went plant based? I mean, for the first Thanksgiving or the first holiday meal, what happened then? Well, that's when people kept saying, you know, my sister finally said, "Would you stop? Stop! No one wants to hear this. They don't. They're my my. I am." a food addict and I'll be the first to go, hi, I'm Jean Schumacher. I'm a food addict and I'll be the first to admit it. And both sides of my family are, and they're addicted to the very high food like substances. And, you know, that really have hit our pleasure centers. They, you know, typically a lot of the, my family has health issues and problems. I'm the only one out of five siblings that is not on a sleep pat machine that is not on medication you know, to deal with a health issue or have dealt with cancer or, you know, whatever. We've had a lot of things in, in our family and it, it all has to do with what's at the end of your fork. I mean, there's, you know, I call it the trifecta. You have to change what goes in. So that's food and drink. 
you have to change what goes on so that the personal care products and the environmental toxins you're being exposed to. That's one of my absolute, because I think people are talking a lot about the food, but they, you know, these environmental toxins, there's been over like 50,000 chemicals since World War II that have been introduced into the environment and to these personal care products. And I could spend hours talking about these things and what they're doing to us. You know, mass, ma anything you put on your skin in 26 seconds is in your bloodstream, anything, you know, it, in, and if you're taking medication, your body has to deal with that medication. We're not, met, our bodies are not designed to be long-term on medications. You know, I run a Facebook group called the high blood pressure Facebook group, you know, support group. And most of the people are on medications in that group. And it's like, you know, you can get off a lot of your medications if you go plant-based, you know, and people, a lot of people choose to stay on medications. I don't understand why, but okay, that's a choice you have to make. I mean, we make choices, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I, we do. And it's that I, I, it's hard to let go again. I mean, these, these addictions are so strong. I mean, I hear, of course I hear, I can never give up cheese. That, that's the big one, right? I can never give up cheese. So. Because it is. And there's a book called The Cheese Trap by Dr. Neil Barnard. And I did a whole series with his book on that because that is such a powerful book. The reason why we're addicted to the, the cheese is because it has a drug in it called casomorphine. And it is addictive. And when you make it into cheese, you're taking cow's milk and you're concentrating it and you're making it even more addictive, you know. And there are people that really are cheese addicts. And so it is the cheese trap and it causes a lot of problems, a lot of of health problems. So you can get the cheese out of your diet. That's right. even better. Yeah. And I think that um, we have to be cognizant of this when we're talking to people, we have to understand that they're not, they're not even aware, right. Of how addictive this is. And so we have to have compassion for them and to be there whenever right. they come, like your family comes knocking on the door. So that'd be very interesting to see. <laughs> If they if they want to turn it around, right? If there's anyone there that will turn it around, right? That they that they they're lucky they have you. Well, I'd be a good resource, you know, for sure. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. But you know, everybody's got their own path they're gonna follow, and I'm just gonna continue to be a good example and do what I'm doing. Cause it I think for me, you know, we all have to know our why. Why is it that we're doing this? And for me. My why is I want to be out. I'm, it took me a long time to get up to Cape Cod and it is such a magical place. I'm not kidding. It's so beautiful. And if you get a chance on Facebook, I have a group plant-based Cape Cod and I just posted the most beautiful pictures today of our walk. We you know went forest bathing and in this beautiful pine forest and then deciduous forest. Then we were at the they're, they're called kettle ponds, which are remnants of the glaciers. And then we went over to the beach, the bayside, which when the tide goes out, the beach goes out for about five miles. You can walk out like five miles. Wow. So every six hours, this changes, you know, with the tide. So high tide, low tide, high tide, low tide, every six hours. That's so, beautiful. beautiful. It is. It's gorgeous. Oh, my God. And when you get out there walking, it's just like. And, and at this time of the year, like all the tourists have gone home and it's still beautiful. It's still so gorgeous. So. That's nice. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. you're there. <laughs> it sounds like you, you know, that was a good plan. It is. And, and I want to be out hiking and kayaking and biking and doing all those things till the day I pass from this planet. I have more energy now than I did when I was half my age. You know, I'm in better shape. I mean, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not going to go out and run or anything. A lot of plant-based people start running. That would not be this person unless there's a bear involved. I'm not running. Okay. <laughs> but I will be on my bicycle and I do like to walk and I like to hike and kayak and stuff like that. So, you know, that's what I want to be out there doing. I don't want to be in the nursing home. You know, my mother-in-law went into the nursing home at age 72 and it was, this is back in the day. So it was, you know, a while ago, the first time she went in it was it was four thousand dollars a month and by the time she died seven years later it was up to nine thousand and i've had people tell me since that it's like fifteen thousand now a month a month a month that is insane who is gonna pay for this 
I'm just saying, who's going to pay for this? So, you know, these are all things that we can change. And it doesn't matter how old you are. You can make these changes, you know, and, and really help to navigate your own health. Um, you know, but there's a lot of confusion out there. You know, there's keto, there's paleo, there's, you know, whatever. Um, and so I think that's one of the biggest things is to know what is going to work for you and not going to hurt you long term. So. Right. Yes, definitely. Because some are short term quick fixes. Right. But what's the what's the, the issue in the long run? That's scary. I met someone that told me she ate lard. She was on the keto um, diet, you know, and she said she eats lard. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, she's young. She's I would say 30s or 40s. I just I don't even know what to say there. I just was basically speechless. And you can't argue with these people because like, <laughs> oh, my God, my blood work's coming back and it's great. And I'm like, yes, but have you looked at what the long term impact is going to be on you as soon as you stop this, what you're doing, because you can't sustain that. You cannot. You know, that's what I love about a plant based diet is I can sustain this for the rest of my life that I have no problem with this. And the food. Oh, my God. It's so incredible. The variety. I eat more variety now than I ever did my entire life. You know, like you still you have those eight, ten recipes <laughs> and you <just laughs> made them all the time. And so this now I'm constantly, you know, taking recipe, you know, trying somebody else's recipe. I'm like, mm, let me tweak this. Let me make this my own and put my own spin on it and how I like the flavor of it and stuff like that. So anyway. Yes. Yeah. And, and Stephanie's saying that, too. There's so much variety. Yes. And I'm learning now to just really experiment. I made a butternut squash, which I and acorn squashes, which I've never had before. And then just really yeah. using different spices instead of normally I would have just doused them in butter or something, you know, like, you know, that, that would have been it. But, you know, now it's, it's really, it's, it's kind of magical to create. <laughs> so yes, definitely. It's fun. People it are is. not aware. It is fun. You know? I, I'm not arguing, you know, and yeah, failure to plan. Stephanie made that point is a pl failure to plan is a plan for failure. Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's about the food. And if you're hungry, like I always have food with me because if I'm hungry, I can talk myself into anything. Okay. I can sell myself on okay. anything, even though I know it's going to be harmful to me or whatever. I can sell myself on it in a New York minute and then it's not going to help me. So I look at it this way, either, you know, you're going down a path and you can go left or right and it's either going to help you or it's going to hurt you. There's not, there's not another choice in there, you know? So you get to make those decisions, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, and snacks in between. So. That's very true. And so this is what we have to do before we go to the holiday gathering. We have to know that there's going to be times that we're going to be uncomfortable. We can't just think, oh, everything's going to be great and then get mad when it, right. when it's not perfect, right? We accept that things are going to be bumpy. And like you said, it's only for one day and right. to be, you know, and be ready for the responses, be ready to let things go when someone says, you know, like, like you said, what if, um, well, you, I guess you get, don't you get sick of eating grass, right? You know, that you're, you're going to be jabbed and, and that's okay to be strong and get ready mentally to be strong. And I like Stephanie pointed out, you know, about, I like to call ahead and going out to a restaurant is fun too. You know, there's a lot of people that go out for, for Thanksgiving and, and enjoy that because let me just say, there's a lot of cooking involved, you know, in going in, in whether you're doing a traditional Thanksgiving or a plant-based Thanksgiving or a combination, whatever. There's a lot of cooking involved. My my mother used to make my father take all five of us kids and go out hiking, you know, while she was at home preparing all this because she couldn't have had five kids under her feet and cook this you know, amazing Thanksgiving meal. And it's like you, you spend four hours, you know, four days making this dish, that dish, this dish. And then you sit down and eat it. And like 20 minutes later, you're like, yeah, we're done. You know? <laughs> and you're in a food coma. A and you're in a food coma, coma and you're just like, okay, 
And then you, you know, you start picking at it the rest of the day, but still, you know, it's all this work. It's a tremendous amount. So if you can go out to dinner and have somebody make a plant-based Thanksgiving, I'm in, I have no problem with that. You know, and I would I think, love to do yeah. that. And it's important to speak up. Like so many times I hear people get mad and say, well, there was nothing on the menu. But if we ask, I mean, chefs like a challenge. They want to see what they have in the kitchen and how they can accommodate you. So it's really important that we ask, even if we're not even hungry. Like a lot of times I just simply ask, what do you have on the menu? What's What do you have vegan on the menu, whether I'm going to order or not? Because I want them to know right that there that someone wants to about to know about vegan options and what can the chef create for me and i've had some wonderful creations so don't be shy i mean how can we make change if we don't speak up and i went to this restaurant and i, I had to go when i was teaching they took us into the city for these professional development and they took us out to lunch they couldn't have picked the, the, the most antithesis restaurant of the way I eat. They couldn't have picked one even as far away from the way I eat. They couldn't have picked one even. So I called ahead and I said, listen, this was like two days before. I said, listen, I'm coming in w with my school group. I said, I have to go. They <laughs> said, I'm plant-based, but I also don't eat oil and salt. What can you do for me? You know, and after she stopped laughing, you know, because she's like, have you seen our menu? And I'm like, I know. What can you do for me? And she says, well, you know, our chef really likes the challenge. And so when I got to the restaurant, it was by far the best meal that I had ever had at a restaurant. Bar Plant-based ones, bar none. It was absolutely out of this world. And he just, I went back and gave him a tip, you know, and it was so funny because this was a restaurant. It was called Blue Smoke. And it was like Southern country fried everything, <laughs> as much caloric density animal products as you could, mac and cheese and stuff like that. And like, wow. And everybody, when he brought out mine, now they gave, they were served us all like family style. So he brought out my stuff and everybody's looking over like, Hey, and I'm like, mine, <laughs> mine, mine. <laughs> no, you cannot have this. This is not family style. This is like one order. Forget it. So go eat your stuff. But it was the I best. love that. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, and here was a restaurant that couldn't get gotten any further away from how I eat. And they came through even like steak, steak restaurants, you know, steak houses. <laughs> They've got amazing baked potatoes, although you have to be careful. Like some places are now injecting the baked potatoes with butter and oil. Oh, that, thank so, you for the so. warning. Uh, oh. You have to ask. And like like one place rolled, not only did they do that, but then they rolled the baked potato in salt and cooked Ooh. it. I'm like, I mean, it came out with crystals of salt. <laughs> on it i'm like i'm scraping off the, you know the salt on there going seriously do you have one before you get it salted or oiled up buttered up can we i just can i just have a potato you know please <laughs> is that possible that's too funny so, but i mean you have to you, have, you do have to ask because the, the restaurants are doing that now because it makes them taste better. And then they give you a cup of sour cream and butter. And then you see people putting all of that on there too, on top of it, after they've already, you know, put the oil and the salt and the butter in already. So, yes, anyway. I, I've seen it too. Yes. It's um, crazy. Stephanie's saying, I lo love that story. I'm glad the chef went over and beyond to make you something that fits your plant-based lifestyle. Yeah, I know. And I, and it does make me feel so good. Like if somebody, like I get invited over, they go and make the effort and make something plant-based for me. That just means the world to me. Like, like you really, you made that for me. Like, thank you so much. You know, like I'm so grateful and I, it, I am, I really am because it's, it's difficult to eat this way. It really is not, not difficult, but to like go out to a restaurant or to, you know, to be at somebody's house you know, because we're going up against the crowd. <laughs> so, right. Um, yeah. And, and I'm in the South too. So 
sometimes it, it can be difficult depending on who I'm with. But I mean, most of my friends, my friends, well, I'm very blessed that I have very kind friends. And so some of them will insist that I pick the restaurant. But, you know, I really tell them I can eat anywhere because I feel like if I eat, I can. Right. I, I don't want to be someone that's so, you know, low. Oh, here's the troublemaker. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be, be I want them to know that, you know, I, I can eat as long as I just as long as I'm pleasant, then they will help. That's the main thing. If you're going to not not go in and complain to everyone, but say this is who I am and, and with a smile on your face. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I do. And I usually bring food with me. <laughs> right. And to be grateful, like you're saying, gratitude for the for the holidays that you've been invited. That's very, very important. Something that a lot of us forget that <laughs> we're blessed to have people that care about us and want to be with us. Right. And these are people that don't understand, just like I used to not understand. These are people that are very addicted to casein and, and cheese and milk and dairy, just like I used to be. So right. they're not any different than me. I'm just lucky enough to be aware now. And these poor people are not aware and it's killing yeah. them. Yep. No, for sure. And, and that's one of the things that I really try. I go out, I lecture at libraries. I help, you know, do classes. I teach, you know, all over to try and help people to get the word, you know, and I started the plant-based Academy because you have questions and you need that support, you know, because you, you're going to have far and few between, especially like if you're out in like in the Midwest or someplace, you know, I had to go to Minnesota a couple of times and it's like the land of mayonnaise. I mean, like, wow, everything's covered in mayonnaise sauce. And uh, there was no restaurants that I could go to. They didn't like vegan. What's that? Are you like from another planet? What, what, you know, it's like I had no options. So it can be hard, you know, if you're in a community of, of very big animal eaters and they don't get it. There's, you know, there's not that, that knowledge of that. So it can be tough. And so having that support and guidance, you know, we connect in the plant-based Academy. We do that at least twice a week. You know, we do it through zoom and connect. And I really like that a lot because we have people from beginning, you know, plant-based living to people that have been plant-based is almost as long as I have, but you still want to have that community and support and you want to have, Oh, Hey, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? You know, uh, try this. Oh my God, I made this. Oh, everyone crazy. You know, so you, you can connect and share those, those mind blowing recipes with other people that are just like, yeah, you got to try this. Where do you see this? Ooh, 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 yum. And so when you can do that and be together, but then, okay, what about oxalates? Should I be worried about oxalates? You know, you have these questions, you know, or what vitamin D, you know, are you using or uh, vitamin B12? You know, everybody should be taking vitamin B12, whether you are plant-based or not, omnivore, carnivore, whatever you consider yourself to be, Everybody needs to be taking B12. And there's two different types. There's methylcobalamin and there's cyanocobalamin. So which one do I take? And there's controversy, you know, there's research about both kinds. And there's people that argue both ways. And so which way are you going to go and why, you know? So there's a lot to learn, you know, about yourself and nutrition, about this high-performance vehicle, because we didn't come out of the shoot with a, with a owner's manual. You know, I wish we did. It would be a lot... <laughs> helpful it really would be <laughs> but we're kind of stumbling right. along and realizing what is you know right and so tell us more about the um academy well i i i got frustrated because in the beginning like there you had no one i had all these questions so i was the one going out you know seeking out like the expert and learning and trying to figure this out because i'm a teacher you know so I started learning about this and, you know, doing the Cornell courses and McDougal and, you know, and any courses that I could take, I started learning about and learning this and, and learning the research because there's a lot of research out there about this. And then when the movies came out, you know, to help support those and promote those, but, you know, I didn't have anybody to turn to. And so I thought, Oh my God, what are these poor people, you know, when you start, you just, you're overwhelmed. It really is. There's a huge learning curve in the beginning. Well, I've done that all for you. I'm like, here it is. Here's, here's the steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four. And then I've guided you all through the whole process. And if you go on to plantbasedacademy.net, all of my things are .net. So 
plantbasedacademy.net. If you go to .com, it's like some cooking school in Ireland. So that's <laughs> okay. not me. So plantbasedacademy.net. And then there's a video that shows you all the things. So we have a dedicated Facebook group. There's no advertising at all. It's just us in the group. You can't find it. I've locked down all the permissions. So you can't see it, find it, comment, unless you're in the group and invited personally by me. So, you know, it's every day I post in there what I'm cooking or recipes or education or you know, somebody has a question, then I'm I'm usually right on right on there to answer it. And we've got a range of people from just people starting to people who've been plant based for a long time. So, you know, people, if I'm not around, you know, somebody else can answer and and know it's gonna be good information. So, you know, we're just a, it's a great community of people that are caring and want to be together on this journey because it's hard. It really is when, you know, when you're going out to the rest of the world, <clears throat> it's just nice, you know, and I've created this community here on Cape Cod as well, local, but I've also done it with the plant-based Academy. So a lot of the people that are in the Academy are from local here as well. So it's just nice. We've created this community. So like, you know, Hey, is anybody going down to red and roses? We have a place that is, you know, plant-based, not hundred percent plant-based, but, moving towards it quite quite quickly and you know who's anybody want to meet down there for lunch you know i'm going into hyannis today and so we'll post it in the group and you know you might have a taker or two or three or five and you know just have a nice lunch with with people that you don't have to explain you know and my husband and i like to do game nights so we set up game nights and we do that and we get together with other couples that are plant-based and we don't have to explain where are you going to get your protein from? You know, uh, I mean, it's a great question. <laughs> All right. <It's> a great <laughs> question. And I'm like, yeah. Like, do you even know like what the name of somebody who is protein deficient? Do you even know anybody protein deficient? No, you do not get over the protein, but okay. No, but for those people, it's a legitimate question. And, and I get it because they only think that animals have protein and okay, fine, whatever. But I don't have to explain that when I'm with my friends like this and that your friends change, you know, it's not to say that I, you know, like I ditched all my other friends that aren't plant-based, but I don't hang out with them as much. Cause like, you know, I like to go out to eat and, you know, ha you know, play games and stuff like that. And I don't have to spend the time dealing with food and stuff like that. Cause like, we'll do like, okay, you bring this, I'll bring this. And, you know, we do like a little kind of a mini potluck and it's just fun. You know, it's just fun to be with people that get you. But if you're in a place where there's none of that, uh, first of all, I give tips and tricks on how to do that. Like, how can you get the message out in your community? You know, because it's always just starts with one person, <laughs> you know, and then you get two and then two becomes four and four becomes eight. And, you know, you start to build your group up and it's pretty awesome. It really is. Well, that's amazing, Jean. You have so much energy. So you are a great spokesperson for this. Amazing. Yes. And I love your knowledge. It sounds like you really went for it, right? You're like, this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm learning, 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 and you're still learning. It's amazing. So I'm very grateful for everything you're doing. Well, I've got a, I've got a YouTube channel as well. Okay. And I posted a lot of cooking videos that I've put on my website, Simply Plant Based over here, simplyplantbased.net. I put under there their cooking videos that are plant-based and teaching you how to cook this way. So those are out there. They're free. You know, I've done lectures, you know, and interviews with some of the top people in the country, especially, you know, one of the newest things is about your gut biome and how, you know, it's so important to heal that because that's going to help you get your health back is when you heal your gut biome and how to do that, how to transition into that from what I call the sad diet, you know, because it is a transition. You're, you're going to have to heal your gut biome. So, and especially people are sick. People are really sick out there, you know, from type two diabetes and obesity and, you know, heart disease and, and on and on and on and cancer. I mean, you know, I just don't want to get that phone call. I don't, I don't. And so I'm doing everything that I possibly can to not get that call. So well, good. You're inspiring. <laughs> I love your energy. So yeah, you're, this is wonderful. And your tips, all of this has been wonderful. Let me put up one last comment. I see that Stephanie said, 
you know, she had been to a dinner party at someone's house and the host made something special for her. Very heartwarming. That's sweet. Definitely. Yeah. Stephanie's a, she's a great coach. She was my business coach and she's plant-based and very, very healthy, very sweet, very kind hearted. So yeah, well, this is wonderful. Do you have any last words for us? I mean, please, everyone, go check out Jean's YouTube channel. Check out that cat struggling. Here's someone that has all this knowledge and full of life. <laughs> so really, <laughs> reach out to Jean. Yeah. But, but, I, mean, I mean, and that's what I want to do is I just want to spend, you know, I've kind of stepped out of the classroom after almost 40 years of teaching chemistry and environmental science, <clears throat> you know, I was that chemistry teacher who said, okay, who wants to take a chemistry midterm exam or do a project? You know, it's like, duh. <laughs> well, I don't care what the project is. I'm in, you know, right. and I would make them do an analysis of three personal care products and what mm. the chemicals are. Are they organic or inorganic? Are they, you know, how, what impact do they have on the body? I mean, there's all this research out there and their eyes were just like, oh my God, because there's no regulation in this country. And if anybody's looking for toxic free products, I found them. It was a company started by a girl who was 15 years old. And not only did she start that company, her parents went on to start Plant City in Providence, Rhode Island. And if you've not heard about Plant City, it is amazing. It's the first plant-based market hall in the country. There's four plant-based restaurants, a sushi bar, a, you know, it's all, it's all plant-based. It's all, it's incredible. It's incredible. So this, this family is just amazing. So if anybody wants that, you can go on, you know, plantbasedacademy.net. And the same thing under Simply Plant-Based, it's also, you can find the resources there too. Either one of those websites. And I share with you the things, because like, I want to share like this lifestyle. I just want to shout from the rooftops because it's so powerful, but I also call it the trifecta. You, so you have to change what goes in food and drink. You have to change what goes on. So the personal care products and the environmental toxins we're being exposed to, and then you have to exercise. I mean, there's more to health than that, but if you don't have that foundation of those three, yeah, you can't build off of that. That's a wobbly platform. So you've got to have those three pieces together. So, oh, well, I'm very inspired. I'm very inspired by this talk. So I am very grateful. And I'm going to check out, look at your channel for some, some good recipes to make for this Thanksgiving. And actually I need one for tomorrow. So I'm going to be checking that out later tonight. So, yeah. So everybody that's watching, please subscribe to this channel, to Jean's channel and check out everything, all of her wonderful resources. And thank you, Jean, so much for this. It's been just been a blessing. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share my knowledge. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Stephanie, JJ, and everybody watching on the replay. Thanks for your nice comments. And I'll say namaste vegan, everybody. <laughs> Bye.